This video is a product buyer's guide intended for gift givers and adult collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And saying. In today's video, we'll be reviewing an all new brand of Playline dolls from Mattel, Cave Club. It's been a while since we've reviewed anything from Mattel on our channel, but we have reviewed several Barbies, Monster High, and Ever After High dolls in the past. Links to these playlists will be in the description below if you'd like to check them out. This is also just a brief, friendly reminder that Toy Chat is not a children's channel, and this video will be directed to adult gift givers and collectors. If you happen to be a parent seeking children's content for your young one, we do suggest you check out the YouTube Kids app. Cave Club is a line of 10-inch articulated fashion dolls introduced this year from Mattel. They are inspired by, as the name suggests, cavemen and prehistoric times. In today's video, we will be reviewing all five of the core characters from Cave Club. There is another character named Raquel, who seems to be exclusive to a dinosaur figure playset, which to our knowledge has not yet been released. We found these dolls mainly at Target, although Slate, the boy, seems a bit rarer. We had to order him online at walmart.com. They are priced at retail for $14.99 each. Following the launches of Cuckoo Harajuku in 2017, which we also reviewed on our channel, as well as Creatable World last year, is Cave Club a worthwhile new entry in Mattel's fashion doll catalog? Let's dive in and find out. The Cave Club dolls all come in the same plastic dome packaging with the colorful Cave Club logo on the lower left side. The artwork for this series is particularly striking, thanks largely to the talent of Darko Dordovich, who also designed previous Monster High and Moose Toys packaging art. We see his beautiful adaptation of each character on the backs of the boxes, alongside a blurb about the Cave Club a truly unruly group of prehistoric kids who are way ahead of their time. Cave Club dolls are not recommended for children under the age of four. Let's tear them open and get a closer look. First up, we have Cave Girl Emberly out of box. She has crimped neon pink and yellow hair tied into a high ponytail on top of her head. Over her cropped bangs is a molded plastic bone headband. Her face is dusted with freckles and she has what looks like a zigzag cave painting on her left cheek. She wears a bone choker around her neck, which impressively features a real yellow ribbon tied closed at the back. Her polka dotted crop top is a separate piece from her layered yellow zigzag skirt. She wears a pink belt with a stone hammer piece and has pink leg warmers at her ankles. And of course, cave girls don't wear shoes. Emery comes with some very cute accessories. Her pink velociraptor pet is named Flare. The pet even has an articulated head so you can move it left and right. She also comes with a caveman club that you can pop the top off of to turn it into an adorable torch accessory. Lastly, Emery gets a pink bone brush, though I don't think we want to brush out that crimped hair. Next up, we have Rorelei. Hmm. This name ringing a bell to anyone else? <coughs> Rorelei has purple crimped hair tied up by a plastic tusk hairband. Her face is decorated in tribal paint and she wears an orange faux fur shawl around her shoulders. This is a removable separate piece. Sporting a purple polka dotted crop top, her dress is a lovely yellow to orange ombre with tiger stripes and a sash that goes over her shoulder. She wears a purple belt with saber teeth over the skirt. Rorelei's leg warmers are purple as well. Rorelei's pet is a saber tooth kitty named Feral. Ah, uh, like Feral, get it? Once again, sporting the head articulation. 
Her feline-inspired purse is especially fun because it does include a cat ear attachment that can actually be removed and placed on the doll. Her brush is the same as Emberly's, but in purple. Now let's take a look at Fernessa Unbox. She has long, poofy pink hair tied into buns on either side of her head. There is a single cascading yellow curl on the right side as well. Her large plastic yellow and pink headband seems to be inspired by prehistoric plants. The floral theme continues throughout the rest of her outfit as we see a plastic yellow and white collar piece over her neon flower pattern dress, decorated with a leafy green sash off to the right side. Her leg warmers are yellow with painted pink flowers. Vanessa has an incredibly cute flower pot accessory. You can make the pink bloom inside go from open to close by adjusting the handle at each side. Her pet Tilly resembles a pterodactyl and once again has an articulated head. Vanessa's brush is a light pink. Now here is Tella out of box. Her straight white and blue hair is tied into a long ponytail and separate cave girl poof on top of her head. Her purple ice crystal hairpiece is slightly glittery and translucent. Tella's face is decorated in white sparkles and she wears probably the most elaborate makeup of any of the Cave Club girls with layers of purple, mint, and green in her eyeshadow. Her beautiful blue to purple ombre dress has celestial print and furry lavender trim. She wears a yellow belt decorated in celestial symbols and her leg warmers are a powdery blue. Tella's prehistoric feline friend is named Hunch. He's mostly light blue with a magenta faux hawk. Tella comes with a translucent purple telescope that has a crystallized looking lens. You can look inside it, but unfortunately it will not give off a kaleidoscope effect. Her brush is the same powdery blue as her leg warmers. Lastly, let's take a look at Kate's club's only boy, Slate. He's sporting a slightly different sculpt with larger arms than the other girls, though the articulation is the same. His poofy blue hair with streaks of green is crimped slightly at the sides and styled into a single large wave. He has painted faux fade across the back of his head in a light blue color. Being an artist, Slate has a splooge of paint on each cheek. Slate wears a simple necklace decorated in sharp teeth. His tunic has detailed tribal designs and splatter in several shades of green. He wears maroon colored tiger striped shorts and blue faux fur leg warmers around his ankles. Slate holds a paintbrush accessory dipped in a green paint, matching his multicolor palette that you can clip on his forearm. His blue pit Taggy is the only one not featured head articulation. He's a solid piece minifigure. Slate comes with a blue belt-like piece sporting a molded satchel splattered in paint. Unfortunately, this piece does not fit especially well around his waist or over his shoulder. His brush is a light green. Cave Club dolls have nine points of articulation total. You can move them at the head, the shoulders, as well as the elbows and the wrists. They are impressively poseable there and these pieces feel quite sturdy. You can sit them down at the thighs. You can bend their knees as well. And that covers their articulation. They do not have any ankle articulation. All right, so here are our final thoughts on Mattel's Cave Club dolls. Cave Club was a very fascinating choice for Mattel to make, considering cavemen and a prehistoric theme don't feel like something especially timely or trendy in 2020. That being said, it certainly makes this line stand out on store shelves. The aesthetic is very colorful and over the top. I definitely don't think these will be for everyone. Young kids certainly seem to be the target demographic, although I'd honestly be curious how much this theme would catch their attention when held up against the likes of LOL Surprise or Shopkins. 
I do have to say I'm impressed with their level of detail. For just $15, these dolls are heavily articulated, very poseable. You can even stand them on their own relatively well because they have pretty large feet and they do come with quite a few accessories. It's very interesting to me that Mattel seems to so heavily prioritize articulation in their fashion dolls for every series except Barbie. <laughs> The adult collectors out there who may be craving something more in the realm of Monster High nostalgia are likely, I think, to have more of a mixed response to these. Cave Club does bring some of the color pop and stylized fun that made Monster High so appealing, but the theme, characters, and facial sculpts I had a much harder time connecting with, honestly. Slate, the boy, is an easy favorite for me. You know, more boys, please, Mattel. <laughs> Overall, I think Cave Club is cute and fun. You know, they did definitely make for some adorable thematic photos, but it misses the mark in terms of potential for longevity, in my opinion. I think Mattel still has enormous potential for brands beyond Barbie, so I definitely hope they'll continue communicating with collectors and kids alike to see how they can maximize their fashion doll strengths in modern times. It's interesting to see that this is where Mattel lands on with their latest entry in the Playline Battlefield. Max and I had a conversation on who these dolls are made for. As Max has mentioned, caveman theme doesn't seem to fit what kids are looking for nowadays. With the success of OMGs, I would assume they would want to compete with more hip fashion dolls. But from a financial risk perspective, I can see why Mattel wouldn't want to go head-to-head -head competition with OMGs. Cave Club is cute and it seems like Mattel has put effort into designing these. They are colorful and you really do get bang for your buck. They remind me a bit of Monster High with their colorful and fun appearance, but the similarity ends there. One thing Monster High has gotten right is no matter how budget they got, they always had really detailed and creative shoes and Cave Clubs, well, they don't wear any. Um, so I'm just curious how far they can stretch this caveman theme out in the long run. But I am in love with articulation. I think all dolls need them. It's definitely a major selling point to me. I think kids can even appreciate the ability to pose and, you know, flex their creative imagination with more articulation on their dolls. I look forward to seeing what Cave Club comes up with next. Mattel really needs a hit on their hands. I think OMGs really need healthy competition in store shelves so we can continue to get the best products from all toy companies. So thank you for joining us for our review of Cave Club Dolls by Mattel. Definitely make sure to sound off in the comments and let us know what your thoughts are on these. I know there's been a lot of different opinions in the doll photography and Instagram community on this little comeback from Mattel in terms of a new brand. So let us know what you think. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Let us know what you'd like to see reviewed next on our channel and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.